listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna feel so aligned. With all the risk involved, and I'll elaborate on that, uh, family court system, like we said, um, uh, custody and, and all that stuff, why should black men specifically remain enthusiastic about marriage? And some of the stats to consider, 50% of divorces around there end, I mean, uh, marriages end in divorce. 80% of which are initiated by the women, while 100% of marriages are initiated by men. So statistically speaking, 100% of men are starting marriages. 80% of women are ending marriages. That's and 50-50, it's a 50-50 pool. So why should men still be enthusiastic? I guess, uh, that's a skewed stat to say 100% of marriages are initiated by men. But who's getting on their knees and proposing? That's the initiation of a marriage. Yeah, I mean, because mm, then you're you're negating the fact that some women propose to men. What percentage? I'm not saying. I'm just saying. One percent. Point zero five percent. I'm just saying. And like, when you propose to her, that's not the initiation of marriage. She has to accept it. So it's like fifty percent of people are initiating mar marriage, as well as, or fifty percent of male and fifty percent of women. No, no. Accepting it is not initiate. Initiating is I'm going for this thing. Whether it's accepts it or not is by the way. But as far as starting the process, men are starting the process. But as far as ending the process. 80% are ended by women. The proposal is not marriage. It's We're starting the process. Uh, if the then you could say that the, if the, the proposal relationship, doesn't happen, the marriage doesn't happen. You could say that if the relationship didn't happen, then the marriage is not going to happen. Girls so, aren't asking dudes out. I mean, that's not happening. It's not happening at scale. Maybe you know something I don't, but it doesn't seem like it's happening at scale. With all those things taken into account, why should men still be enthusiastic about marriage? I mean, I'm enthusiastic about marriage because I want to have one person that I can confide in. I don't want to have to spread myself thin. So I think that isn't a gender-based reason. I think that goes both ways. I would want, I would think a man would be excited to not have to worry about, is this girl holding me out? Is this girl just using me for financial gains? I mean, it goes both ways. That could happen in marriage, too, though. It could. I'm not saying it, it couldn't. And but it like, does happen in marriage, especially with the court system. I'm not saying it doesn't, but, like, the same way that women can still be getting played in marriages. Like, you can't just look at it from one side. So, like, you would, I would, I am excited about marriage. I'm not saying that my marriage is going to be perfect, but I'm excited about marriage because I want to find that one person that I can relate to for the rest of my life. And that one person that I can confide in for the rest of my life. And the, the reason I... I painted the question as why should men be enthusiastic is because just like you said, you're right. Women are getting cheated on, right? Women are getting abused, right? And the same thing is happening to men. But what you don't see is women losing their property. What you don't see is women being bankrupt. What you don't see is women having to move out of their house and still pay the mortgage. What you don't see is women being forced to pay alimony to a man who cheated on them. That's what you don't see. But this is what you see with men. So the argument tends to be that it seems like men have more to lose. I mean, if you think the only loss and gain in a marriage is financially, then, I mean, you're going to always see yourself as losing. But you have to think there's emotional loss, too. And so, like, sometimes... And I think you had brought this, this up, not that I necessarily agree with this point, but you said as a woman ages, she loses her value. As a man ages, he, he gains his value. So is she not losing equally to like get divorced later on in life? It's just not a monetary loss. So I think like sometimes like it's very, it, it seems very black and white, like, oh, she lost, he lost her, his assets or whatnot. So automatically he's losing more. But it's like, sometimes there's more emotional turmoil that comes with divorce that people don't take into consideration. And I'm not saying the man doesn't gain or like doesn't have that, but it's not just like 
I got money and everything's great. And I, I think it's an unfair point to try to say like, oh, like you should not want to get into marriage because you could lose money. You can always gain money back. You can never gain peace. I actually agree with you. Um, and I, I think that both people lose ultimately. But what makes it complicated is I think most people, both people lose. So the stats should be 50% of divorces are initiated by men, unhappy men, cheated on men. 50% are initiated by women, unhappy women, cheated on women, right? And then the court system tends to go the side of the person who was right in the situation, wrong in the situation. But those numbers are lopsided. 80% are initiated by women. And the court system tends to side with the women, regardless of if she was the cheater, if she was the abuser, if she was this, if she was that. There are stories, of, and, and this is why these conversations are so important, because there are stories of men. Like one guy, he gives TED Talks now. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But his wife, he married a woman from the church. And his wife forced him to weigh himself naked once a week because she wanted him to lose weight. And she refused to have sex with her husband until he lost an amount of weight that she thought was satisfactory. And the whole time she was having sex with other people while they were married. See, I've heard that's that's a story that I hear more in the reverse. And that's that's a point that I've heard guys say that they lose attraction to their wife because they've gotten heavy or they've gotten they've let themselves go. So, like, I, I'm not saying that that situation doesn't happen. Yes, women but, can be trifling. It's equally as men can be trifling. But again, what makes it more painful is I'm sure it happens in both situations, but he was the breadwinner. Mm -hmm. And she initiated the divorce. Because even in the situations where the guy is the devil, it's still the woman initiating the divorce. And then after that, he's the one who has to pay alimony and child support. So the guy loses whether he's right or wrong. Whereas the woman, she can still win if she's right or wrong. And that's what I'm talking about. It's lopsided. The law doesn't care about because there are men who are being abused. We don't talk about it. There are men who are being cheated on. We don't talk about it. Women tend to talk more. Women are more vocal. Women are more emotional. But what's what's crazy? As a matter of fact, I was watching a documentary about male uh, is a male uh, domestic violence shelter. And they were interviewing this guy. This guy was 6'3", 250 pounds. He looked like an NFL linebacker. And he was being abused almost to, the, to the, almost close to death by his girlfriend. And he ran away to the homeless shelter. They were like, dude, you're 6'3", 250 pounds. Why are you letting a woman abuse her like that? He said that if I called the police on her, what do you think would happen? They show up in my black 6'3", 250 pound ass is here talking about this 5'2 woman was abusing me. I might get shot. <laughs> it's, it's funny, but it's not funny. Yeah. And this is what a lot of men deal with. And the, Trump calls it the quiet majority, but it's real. So again, where we are now, why these conversations are so important is because there are a lot of men who are suffering. And even in their suffering, nobody says, you know what, you're the victim. Some women are being labeled victims, even though they're the perpetrator. Just because she's a woman, just because she's six, uh, five, two, just because she can cry on cue. Yeah. And men can like, do you see the the couple who went viral because the, the woman kept slapping mm -hmm. or whatever? Yeah, like that is, that is more common than you realize. No, and that is what's infuriating men, because they're saying that we can lose it for good. We can lose it for bad. We can lose it for in the middle. And you can win if you are a Jezebel. You can win if you're a saint. You can win. So, like, what, what should we say to those men? And how do we even those numbers out? I think this conversation is going to make me more empathetic towards the men. Like, I, I think I used to hear a lot of Kevin Samuels and the men speaking like Kevin Samuels, and I used to get frustrated. But now I'm starting to see like, it's, it's that kind of rhetoric being spoken out of frustration, out of repeated like, 
being taken advantage of. And it's, it's out of hurt and anger, not necessarily like they truly believe that, but they just kind of want to see a little bit of change. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to take a little bit of empathy when dealing with men in the future. But for that, like, I don't know. I don't want to say like men should vet women better because then that puts the onus on the man. Because we don't say that to women. Right. Um, so I don't want to say that for sure. But I don't know. I, I think there needs to be some even playing field. But one, <laughs> I can't wait till they come out with male birth control. So at least that could be a starting point. And I know there is research on it, but when it becomes marketable, I think that will be at least something to say that he can take control himself. Um, two, I think the legal system does need to need to be more just towards the men. Um, it can't just look at it like woman, man, black and white. They have to really take account of like how she is treating him. Because I think in those situations, it's unfair because he's a 6'5", like, as you were saying, athlete, quarterback built. And he's, he's like stuck between a rock and a hard place. If he doesn't do anything, then he's looked like as a bitch. If he does retaliate, then he's looked as, as an abuser. So it's like, what can he do? I don't know. I really don't have an answer to that. I really don't. I think the conversation is, is the first step. So we're doing that. Yeah.